Good morning. Good morning. It's Wednesday. Yeah. So everybody, yesterday was Kate's birthday. Oh. We forgot to tell you on Monday that oh. it was going to be yesterday. <laughs> so we'll tell you post-birthday instead of pre-birthday. Yeah. So it was a good day. Praise the Lord for a year of life. So uh, today we're in Psalm 4. Uh, hopefully you guys had a chance to look at it beforehand. Uh, and Kate's going to read it for us. <clears throat> For the choir director with stringed instruments, a psalm of David. Answer me when I call, God who vindicates me. You freed me from affliction, be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, exalted ones, will my honor be insulted? How long will you love what is worthless and pursue a lie? Know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. On your bed, reflect in your heart and be still. Offer sacrifices in righteousness and trust in the Lord. Many are asking, who can show us anything good? Let the light of your face shine on us, Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and new wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone make me live in safety. Great. Let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this uh, beautiful morning. And we thank you for your word. Lord, uh, be with us as we unpack uh, what this psalm has to say about, about who you are. And we pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Does anything uh, initially <clears throat> jump out to you, Kate? Maybe, you know, who's speaking, who's involved in the song? Yeah, so we see... Um, uh, we see the Lord, clearly, and David, because he's the author, a psalm of David. Um, and we kind of see how David uh, views the Lord, what David believes about the Lord, um, and who, what his confidence is in the Lord. Um, yeah, so I guess just starting there, like who David what the Lord is doing for David. Yeah. We also see David talk about these exalted ones. Mm -hmm. uh, other translations just call that sons of men. Uh, it's meant to convey uh, this idea of powerful men, these powerful people. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also these people that David said are asking who can show us anything good. Uh, it may be uh, those exalted ones. It may be a subset of the exalted ones or the, the son of men. Uh, or it could just be a different type, different people altogether. Mm -hmm. But that's another group of people that David uh, addresses in this song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems that these, these other people are questioning David and not seeking the Lord. Um, kind of very... Um, self-serving in that they love what is worthless and they pursue a lie that they're just seeking things of the world um, and these many don't seem to understand don't see how the things right in front of them or they can't see how what can bring good um, so they're not seeing the Lord because that's David's answer then is that the Lord brings the good um, but yeah I found um, verse 1 is kind of exciting. I think when you start to read the psalm, you just hear people start it and they're like, ah, oh, answer me, Lord, or hear my, hear me, Lord. But I think it's pretty important because we see David coming before God, um, the creator of the universe, and he's petitioning the Lord. He's coming before the one who is to judge him. Um, he's coming before the Lord and asking him, answer me when I call. You freed me from affliction. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. He's really like, just asking the Lord to pay attention to him, to notice him, this David who is just one little man on earth. Um, and so I think there is clear boldness there um, of David, and you kind of see what relationship David has with the Lord mm -hmm. um, in that, in that he can come to the Lord um, and ask him these things. Now, we don't hear what God's response. We don't hear God say, yes, come. But knowing that God freed him from affliction and later on, um, 
uh, at the end, seeing that it is the Lord who makes him live in safety, we know that the Lord is hearing and protecting David. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's quite a few characteristics that are laid out here that are about the Lord, mm -hmm. and so or, or things that the Lord has done, and so we actually have a list of them here. Uh, so the first one we see is that he vindicates God. God is a vindicator. He vindicates David. Um, what does that word mean again? So to vindicate is to like, I don't know how to say, um, almost like uh, validate or or re or prove right or okay. yeah. Usually, if someone is is vindicated, they, they were. They were, they were wronged in some way, and then they've been made right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah, so God vindicates, makes him right, which is important. Um, he frees, he frees from affliction. Uh, he sets his faithful apart. Mm -hmm. He, um, yeah, he hears when David calls, because it says, the Lord will hear when I call. Mm -hmm. uh, he puts joy in David's heart, uh, more joy than uh, grain and wine, so these physical things. Uh, he also uh, makes David live in safety. So there's a whole bunch of actions and characteristics that we see here about the Lord uh, that in this psalm that David's writing. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Yeah, I mean, you just clearly see that the Lord cares for David. Um, probably why is because David honors and respects the Lord um, and trusts the Lord. Um, if he believes that he can come before the Lord and petition all this, then he clearly has a confidence in the Lord. Um, yeah. I think what's then interesting is what David, how David replies to the questions of the others. Um, in verse 2, it's... So, verse this ch chapter 4 kind of is connected to chapter three that we talked about on Monday in that um, the context is similar of, of Absalom is against David trying to pursue him. And so there's David's position right now is that people are taunting him. People are against him. People are, it's, that's what the questions are. They're insulting him and they're pursuing lies, probably the lies that Absalom is saying of, I should take the throne, it's my throne, and he's like, no, it's not, it's mine. Um, so uh, these questions against David are being responded with kind of a warning in verse 3, um, just letting them know, like, know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself, um, which it kind of seems like he's saying these people are not, like, you're against, you're for the lies and worthless things. That's not of the Lord. But no, the Lord sets the faithful apart. And are you, kind of like, are you guys? Are you guys? Yeah, I think, I think that? verse three is, is meant to be a warning. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a warning. These exalted ones, these son of men saying, know that the Lord is set apart from the faithful for himself and that the Lord will hear when I call. So I believe that this is David, you know, warning these exalted ones, mm -hmm. um, and that, so that's who he's addressing right now. Mm -hmm. He's he's essentially giving these them a warning and a command, and mm -hmm. he goes on uh, again with some more instruction. Mm -hmm. So be angry and do not sin. Uh, uh, on your bed, reflect in your heart and be still. So he's um, other translations say like in your anger uh, or tremble. tremble or in your agitation. Mm -hmm. So he's he's again. He's warning them. He's saying, "Don't, don't act upon your agitation. Don't act upon your anger. Uh, don't let it, let it cause you to sin. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead, reflect in your heart uh, and be still." So, I think it's interesting here because you hear that and you're like, "Be angry and do not sin," um, which sounds kind of weird because you know there's so many other verses that are telling you that so much other else in scripture that's speaks against anger um, and showing anger towards others. Um, but I think what's important here is, is yes, part of it is like how it's truly translated and trembling or, um, what was the other one? Um, agitated. Agitated. 
that that's more the sense it's it's this turmoil and that it's not saying you can't ever feel angry or you can't ever feel like be in a situation where you re feel angry it's it's um it's more just not acting upon it that when you be angry if you're angry but don't act upon it and lash out at other people it's go and reflect on your bed spend time with the lord and be still um i think that was interesting yeah so instead of, instead of act on your sin refrain yeah refrain sorry re acting simply on your anger refrain from doing it yeah and then so that's that's the thing that you're supposed to put off put off acting upon your anger and sinning and then he he offers uh what you should do to put on so instead offer sacrifices in righteousness and trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really key one right there, trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the times we get angry because we're not trusting in the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I think it's pretty key that David writes this here because he's addressing that a lot of the reasons that we get angry, get the spare, have turmoil, have agitation, is because there's a lack of trust mm -hmm. in the Lord. And so a lot of, and then that can, can lead us to sin. Uh, and so a lot of times we're, you know, loving things that are worthless. This is what, how he's describing the exalted ones mm -hmm. or pursuing a lie. Mm -hmm. And so that causes us to be agitated and angry. And um, when we don't trust in the Lord, that can result in uh, us being sinful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. And I think he continues to address kind of how people would respond to this, where he says many are asking, who can show us anything good? Um, that when you're in that state and you're, you are seeking something worthless, believing lies, you're feeling agitated and you're not running to the Lord, you can ask, like, what, is there anything good? Like, where is there good? Where, like, there's nothing good here. I'm just agitated and um, upset. And David answers by saying, let the light of your face shine on us, Lord. Kind of calling the Lord to reveal that He is the one that that brings the good. He is the one that where um, that God has put more joy um, than when we are agitated and we seek after um, physical things, seek after grain, food, new wine. Um, that could literally be wine, but a substitute, some other thing that we think is going to fulfill us and satisfy us. Um, He's saying, no, like the Lord provides, provides even more joy than that when we're seeking good. Um, while grain and wine are good, they are not as good as the Lord. Um, and so, yeah, David's really drawing them to see that um, uh, it's in this agitation, we really must trust the Lord and go to the Lord and find joy. And even later, he kind of ends it where he's going to sleep and finds peace and safety in the Lord alone. Yeah. I really think that in this psalm, David is, is trying to communicate uh, that we should petition the Lord. So petition the Lord and pursue Him and His righteousness uh, because joy, goodness, and peace, uh, they come from the Lord. And so I think that's the, that's the point that David's trying to draw out here. Uh, in the psalm is that we should petition the Lord, that we should pursue him, pursue his righteousness, because goodness and peace and, and safety, uh, that all comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, um, it's like all, all truth and a promise of the Lord and, and is, is never, um, it's not a lie. It's, it's a true faithful promise that the Lord will live up to, um, something we can trust in. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so kind of, should we do some applications? Sure. Or do you have other thoughts that you wanted to share? We could do applications. Yeah. Uh, but we should probably see, you know, like, where do we see Christ in this song? Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I skipped that part. <clears throat> yeah, where do we see Jesus um, revealed in this psalm? Well, you know, it says that, um, that for the Lord alone makes me live in safety. Mm. And we know that that is only the case because of Christ. Um, 
the only reason that we are not under God's wrath in, in, in safety is because, you know, Christ mm -hmm. took that wrath for us on, on the mm -hmm. cross. And so, yeah, I think that is one thing that kind of points more mm -hmm. to Christ, and that's that because of the Lord, uh, mm -hmm. we can live in safety. And uh, I would imagine that God's wrath is worse mm -hmm. than anything that the world itself can throw at us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think we also see Christ in the in in the beginning here when he's saying, God who vindicates me, who freed you freed me from affliction. I think we can see here that David's affliction is a very circumstantial, what's around him is difficult with his son trying to kill him. But ultimately our greatest affliction is our sin, and that separates us from the Lord. And the Lord through Christ has ultimately freed all of us from our affliction from sin, um, from death. Um, that's actually the greatest affliction is we are gonna die and go to hell um, but God frees us from that through Christ um, he is gracious to us and he hears our prayers and then that leads us to verse 3 continually being true for us that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself that through Christ we are set apart um, that David's referencing the people of Israel who were set apart um, more like like literally They were circumcised and clearly signs of being set apart, but through Christ, even the Gentiles can be set apart. Well, that's literally what the word holy means. Set apart? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, so I think that's where we're, we're seeing Christ, that ultimately through Christ, that's the only way that, that now we're able to um, be set apart and be in the safety of the Lord and find the joy that we have um, in Christ so from that, I think my application is, um, I think asking myself the question here of how long will you love what is worthless and pursue a lie? Um, I think it's really easy for me to believe lies about my own worth, um, really easy for me to believe lies about that it's all my responsibility to take care of things in life. Um, and none of that is trusting the Lord and believing the truths of the Lord and um, that I can also then choose to run to um, food, not wine, but like run to other things to seek the joy when really the joy comes from the Lord. So um, I think mm, the application that I would do is, is thinking about how can I, um, when I'm being angry or in turmoil or trembling um, to take that to heart and not act upon it and get stuck in that but to offer the sacrifices to the Lord um, so um, pursue his righteousness believing ultimately that his joy the joy that I, I truly desire is found in the Lord and not in something else or not in myself um, so that's probably my application yeah <laughs> yeah I think for, for me uh, the, the be angry and do not sin thing is pretty hard, <laughs> you know, um, turning from, turning from sin when you're agitated or, or, uh, trembling or, you know, in despair, it's, uh, it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. And so I need to learn to, to trust the Lord mm -hmm. instead of, you know, turning to whatever is tempting me or whatever sin, uh, feels good and easy. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, because you know joy it does come from the Lord not from my my sin that uh, mm -hmm. I want to do mm -hmm. yeah. yeah cool well let us know if you have any thoughts on this or um, uh, comments questions concerns yeah put comments uh, yeah leave comments about you know Psalm 4 leave comments about questions you have just general discussion mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it'd be really cool to see discussion happening in the comments or even questions and people yeah. talking about what they see in the song, what the things that stood out to them. Yeah. yeah, what you've learned, what your application is, if you're willing to share. I'd love to kind of hear more about how you're understanding the Psalms and getting to know the Lord through David's prayers. Yeah, that's an easy one. How about if you're if you're watching, put your application of the Psalm down in the comments. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what are you going to do about this? Yeah. 
But yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining uh, on Monday. Next Monday, we're going to be in Psalm 5. Uh, go ahead and just and read that. Just read ahead. It's, it's uh, not very long. 12 verses. It might take you two minutes. <laughs> but yeah, until next time, thanks for coming. Do you want me to quick prayer? Yeah, Kate's going to pray us yeah. out. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for um, the opportunity to study your word to so freely be able to sit here with um, Bibles and uh, have resources to understand your word deeply and to understand you deeply. Lord, would you fill each of us who are able to hear this at whatever time, fill us with joy that only you can bring. Um, help us to turn to you um, and see that only in Christ is where we receive freedom from our afflictions um, and that the joy that we ultimately seek comes from you, not from the things of this world or world worthless things or lies, but help us to truly pursue you, be still, and find joy and safety in you. Pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Have a great day.